Epithylone, Wikipedia Audio Epithylone A and B A, C 26 H 39 number 6 S, B, C 27 H 41 number 6 S A, 493.66 G slash mole, B, 507.68 G slash mole History A. 152044-53-6 B. 152044-54-7 A. 448799 B. 448013 Epithylone C and D C. C 26 H 39 number 5 S D C 27 H 41 number 5 S C 477.66 G slash mole D 491.68 G slash mole D 189453-10-9 C 989126D 447,865 Epithylone E and F E C 26 H 39 number 7 S F C 27 H 41 number 7 S Mechanism of Action E 509.66 G slash mole F 523.68 g slash mole The epithylone are a class of potential cancer drugs. Like taxanes, they prevent cancer cells from dividing by interfering with tubulin, but in early trials epithylone have better efficacy and milder adverse effects than taxanes. As of September 2008, Epithylone A to F have been identified and characterized. Early studies in cancer cell lines and in human cancer patients indicate superior efficacy to the taxanes. Their mechanism of action is similar, but their chemical structure is simpler. Due to their better water solubility, cremophores are not needed. Endotoxin like properties known from paclitaxel like activation of macrophages synthesizing inflammatory cytokines and nitric oxide, are not observed for epithylone B. Epithylone were originally identified as metabolites produced by the soil-dwelling Myxobacterium soringium cellulosum. The structure of epithylone A was determined in 1996 using X-ray crystallography. The principal mechanism of the epithylone class is inhibition of microtubule function. Microtubules are essential to cell division, and epithylone therefore stops cells from properly dividing. Epithylone B possess the same biological effects as paclitaxel both in vitro and in cultured cells. This is because they share the same binding site, as well as binding affinity to the microtubule. Like paclitaxel, epithylone B binds to the alpha-beta-tubulin heterodimer subunit. Once bound, the rate of alpha-beta-tubulin dissociation decreases, thus stabilizing the microtubules. Furthermore, epithylone B has also been shown to induce tubulin polymerization into microtubules without the presence of GTP. This is caused by formation of microtubule bundles throughout the cytoplasm. Finally, epithylone B also causes cell cycle arrest at the G2M transition phase, thus leading to cytotoxicity and eventually cell apoptosis. The ability of epithylone to inhibit spindle function is generally attributed to its suppression of microtubule dynamics but recent studies have demonstrated that suppression of dynamics occurs at concentrations lower than those needed to block mitosis. At the higher antimitotic concentrations, 
paclitaxel appears to act by suppressing microtubule detachment from centrosomes, a process that is normally activated during mitosis. It is quite possible that epithelone can also act though similar mechanism. One analog, Ixabepilone, was approved in October 2007 by the United States Food and Drug Administration for use in the treatment of aggressive metastatic or locally advanced breast cancer no longer responding to currently available chemotherapies. In November 2008, the EMEA refused a marketing authorization for Ixabepilone. Analogs approved for medical use Clinical Trials Several synthetic epithelone analogs are currently undergoing clinical development for treatment of various cancers. Total Synthesis Biosynthesis Epithelone B has proven to contain potent in vivo anti-cancer activities at tolerate dose levels in several human xenograft models. As a result, epithelone B and its various analogs are as of 2001 undergoing various clinical phases, and segapylone are in phase 2 trials, BMS310705 and BMS247550 in phase I trials. Results of a phase 3 trial with ixabepilone in combination with capsidabine in metastatic breast cancer have been announced. Patapylone failed a phase 3 trial for ovarian cancer in 2010. Eudadelone is a genetically engineered epithelone analog that has shown benefits in a phase 3 breast cancer trial when added to capsidabine. Due to the high potency and clinical need for cancer treatments, epithelone have been the target of many total syntheses. The first group to publish the total synthesis of epithelone was S.J. Danishevsky ETAL in 1996. This total synthesis of epithelone A was achieved via an intramolecular ester enolatalde condensation. Other syntheses of epithelone have been published by Nicolou, Skinzer, Mulzer, and Carrera. In this approach, Key building blocks aldehyde, glycidols, and ketoacid were constructed and coupled to olefin metathesis precursor via an aldol reaction and then an esterification coupling. Grubb's catalyst was employed to close the bis terminal olefin of the precursor compound. The resulting compounds were cis and tran macrocyclic isomers with distinct stereocenters. Epoxidation of cis and trans olefins yield epithelone A and its analogs. One of total syntheses of epithelone B is outlined below and was described by the laboratory of K.C. Nicolou. The retrosynthetic analysis revealed 1, 2, and 3 as the building blocks. As seen in Figure 2, Keto acid 1 was generated from the keto aldehyde that was converted to the silyl ether via asymmetric allyl boration and silylation of the resulting alcohol. Ozonolysis of the silyl ether and Lindgren pinnock oxidation of the aldehyde afforded the keto acid. Ketone 2 was constructed via duct enders alkylation starting from the hydrozone. Ozonolysis the last step of the enders alkylation, was followed by reduction of the aldehyde and silylation of the resulting alcohol. Hydrogenolysis of the benzyl ether gave the alcohol, which was oxidized under Swern condition and alkylated with the Grignard reagent to yield the secondary alcohol. Oxidation of this alcohol with the Lake Griffith reagent gave the desired ketone. Thiazole 3 was synthesized from the ester, which was reduced with diisobutylaluminium hydride, and the aldehyde was reacted with the stabilized elide in Wittig reaction. Asymmetric allyl boration of the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde and protection of the hydroxy group gave the silyl ether, whose the terminal olefin was reacted with osmium tetroxide to a diol that was cleaved with lead tetraacetate to furnish the aldehyde. 
Reduction, iodination, and treatment with triphenylphosphine led to the phosphonium salt. Fragments 1, 2, and 3 were reacted with each other to deliver epithylone B in an approach including Wittig reaction, Aldol reaction, and Yamaguchi esterification. Preparative thin layer chromatography was used to separate the diastereomers. Epithylone B is a 16-membered polyketide macrolactone with a methylthiazole group connected to the macrocycle by an olefinic bond. The polyketide backbone was synthesized by type I polyketide synthase and the thiazole ring was derived from a cysteine incorporated by a nonribosomal peptide synthetase. In this BioC thesis, both PKS and NRPS use carrier proteins which have been post-translationally modified by phosphopanthidine groups, to join the growing chain. PKS uses coenzyme A thioester to catalyze the reaction and modify the substrates by selectively reducing the beta-carbonyl to the hydroxyl, the alkene, and the alkane. PKSI can also methylate the alpha carbon of the substrate. NRPS, on the other hand, uses amino acids activated on the enzyme as amino acylatenylates. Unlike PKS, epimerization, N-methylation, and heterocycle formation occurs in NRPS enzyme. Epithylone B starts with a 2-methyl-4-carboxythiazole starter unit, which was formed through the translational coupling between PKS, EPOS A module, and NRPS, EPOS P module. The EPOS A contains a modified beta keto acyl synthase, an acyl transferase, an inoil reductase, and an acyl carrier protein domain. The EPOS P, however, contains a heterosylization, an adenylation, an oxidase, and a thiolation domain. These domains are important because they are involved in the formation of the five-membered heterocyclic ring of the thiazole. As seen in Figure 4, the EPOS P activates the cysteine and binds the activated cysteine as an amino acyl SBCP. Once the cysteine has been bound, EPOS A loads an acetate unit onto the EPOS P complex thus initiating the formation of the thiazoline ring by intramolecular cyclodehydration. Once the 2-methylthiazole ring has been made, it is then transferred to the PKS EPOS B, EPOS C, EPOS D, EPOS E, and EPOS F for subsequent elongation and modification to generate the olefinic bond, the 16-membered ring, and the epoxide, as seen in Figure 5. One important thing to note is the synthesis of the gem dimethyl unit in Module 7. These two dimethyls were not synthesized by two successive C-methylations. Instead one of the methyl group was derived from the propionate extender unit, while the second methyl group was integrated by a C-methyl transferase domain.